We continued with everyone gathered around the dining table at last, and what was apparently a lady by then said that it had been a long time since she had heard anyone play the accordion and gave directions to where the instrument was. That specific someone was precisely this piece of swill, and if I'm praising him like this, I can already tell that I didn't like the character because of his attitude in the future. We then saw him getting ready, and he immediately asked the old woman from before what she would like to hear. Apparently this Batman cape is a guarantee, and this gentleman gave him the idea of what he could play. And so he began, but this sewer cockroach thought he was kicking ass. Look at the look on this human being's face, my lord. I feel sorry for him. In order not to embarrass him, the others were kind enough to say that it wasn't so bad to hear that scattering of notes and asked the protagonist what he thought of the arrangement. To get away from the problem, he just said that he thought it was very good, simply incredible. But the ant washing unfortunately wanted to pick a fight with someone who was quiet, and as incredible as it may seem, he provoked Lin by asking for instructions on this type of instrument. Of course, he did it just to try to humiliate him in front of the others, thinking that he didn't know anything about the instrument itself. That's why I said that the guy is a piece of rubbish, since he's worthless too, like many others in this work. Continuing, Lin knew that the system had given him various kinds of talents, so there was no way that the scum of society could simply defeat him. To defend her man, the Divine Lady said that the insect's attitude wasn't good at all, since the protagonist wasn't studying music or anything like that. But the disposable being said it was all right. As long as the protagonist played the accordion, they could talk openly, since it didn't matter much, and he was one of them after all. This gentleman went on to say that words are not forgotten, and you can say what you mean. And since he put it that way, eating his piece of meat ferociously, Lin said he was going to say it loud and clear then. The play that the walking sewer had recently played had many mistakes. It had given him an earache because of such incompetence, and there was no need for him to give any guidance to the scum. Apparently the people at the dinner were simply surprised by the young Prota's attitude, as they hadn't expected him to act in such a way. Did I add several mistakes to the piece Lago Bike? The rest of the wash asked, and Lago Baikal was the name of the song he had recently played. You're talking too much, Mr. Lin. Come on, don't say that. Listen first to what Mr. Lin has to say, you scumbag who won't even accept criticism. Of course, you didn't say that ending, but the rest is true. After that, the protagonist began to point out to him the mistakes he had made during his presentation, and those were only two of them, apart from all the others he hadn't mentioned yet, but which would make the insect fall to the ground if he said everything. In any case, the divine lady ended up falling even more in love with her boyfriend after seeing the knowledge he had. She even wondered if he really knew how to play the accordion himself, and apparently the others were also surprised by young Lin's judging skills, the one who didn't take constructive criticism well was the lab rat, who said that his accordion skills had been forged by several incredible teachers, and the young prota was talking too much nonsense to let him get away with it. In this case, he asked the same person who had criticized him why he didn't play a gig to show off his talents, since he was so sure of himself, and he couldn't wait to see the difference between the two of them. Little did he know, that he would bitterly regret this decision. The divine lady couldn't wait to hear the boy play. And the lady from before also ended up saying that she was very interested in hearing him show off his skills. In that case then, since she would like to hear it, he said he would give them the chance to hear the Lake Baikal piece without any mistakes. In other words, he would play the same piece that the cattle dung had played just to show him how unskilled he was. As soon as the protagonist began to play the piece itself, everything seemed to be going very well, until the atmosphere changed completely and people found themselves in a tranquil and calm ocean, as if they were literally in super supreme peace. His ability to play the instrument simply amazed this gentleman, who even compared the young Lin to a professional teacher, which was excellent, and the lady said that she felt as if she had seen divine beauty, and when she heard that kind of melody played by the protagonist, it was something simply admirable, praiseworthy. The scrotum scratch from before was simply a grain of sand compared to the mountain that was the proto's abilities. You're being too kind, Miss Jang. I only played the note, and although I know a thing or two, I've learned a lot over time, said the young Lin, or something very close to it. The fly manure began to change the subject so as not to feel so humiliated, and said that he would like to thank his teacher for training him. Now his company had entered a state of development, and there was a company that was about to close a 700 million financing deal with them, and they were just a bit short of reaching the 1 billion mark. He even managed to impress Mrs. Zhang a little, and the insect from before continued to find reasons to boast and try to feel superior to young Lin. Those people who try to elevate themselves in order to diminish others, just to make themselves feel better, are literally the worst kind of scum of society there is. He then revealed that the person he had talked to about the investment was their classmate called Yuan Yuan, and the company she was now in was simply incredible. When they heard the girl's name, 
They were both surprised and silent at the same time, and Mrs. Zhang simply said that she would like to hear about the boy's financial success. But if we think about it, if they are all classmates, it seems that time has not been generous to some people, and the Divine Lady was simply on a completely different level since she was well-preserved and time was simply generous to her. As I said before, the insect was trying to feel superior to the protagonist, and he want to know where the young Lin worked, asking if he want him to invest some money in his company. After all, the Qin Yan family was a business family and said they would invest for the protagonist if he wanted, so it would be better for the operations themselves. Meanwhile, he just said that investments weren't necessary and he didn't really want to be big financially, which left the divine lady simply laughing, since the guy was simply a multi-billionaire. The failed mummy project even said that the young Lin was a man who had words without any ambition, and even said something like he was using the divine lady or something, just to be able to take advantage of her abilities in the future. Clearly, this made the protagonist angry, since putting it that way was not only exaggeratedly wrong, it simply made him look like a really bad guy. Suddenly, it was the young Yuan Yuan who arrived, and she immediately apologized for being late, as she had many other things to do in the company. The skeletal zombie even told the young Wen Yuan to sit next to him, and now that she was a popular person, it wasn't easy to see her. This young woman was still kind to him, and only replied that she wasn't as good as the manure was saying, and now I could better understand why that Jiang lady looked so old. She was actually the teacher of these young ones. So that means that the gentleman with the mustache must also be one of their teachers. Anyway, the young woman eventually spotted her boss there and surprised by this fact, asked him what he was doing at that bar table. But in reply, he said that he had been dragged there by her senior sister. The moment the walking fly saw that she had called him boss, he thought he hadn't cleaned his ears properly and asked Yuan Yuan what she had just called him. Again, she repeated, chief. She also asked if the protagonist hadn't officially introduced himself but from the look on his face, it was clear that he hadn't, not least because he loved to see people humiliating him, and then simply not reacting at all when they discovered the power he had, in this case, the money itself and his possessions. Are you saying that the boss behind the Ling Yun group is him? The walking fly asked. Yes, it may not seem like it, but he's actually really rich, and he used 18 billion to buy the Twin Towers. And no, it's not the Twin Tower you think it is. It was created just for this project, so there's no need to compare it to the accident itself. But little did she know that he had won the towers, had a car costing over 600,000, and was financing the investment she had talked about with the scum from before. Because of the confusion, the young Yuan Yuan asked why he hadn't said that to the fly before, since it wasn't good, and the situation had apparently become very complicated, but there was no reply from him. Leaving, the beautiful divine lady asked her teacher to take good care of her health, and they would see each other again when they had time, so they finally said goodbye to each other. Batman's cape even had the audacity to speak to the protagonist, asking if he had any other plans or if he'd like to play golf that evening, which left all of them initially speechless. Picking up the two girls next to him, he said that golf was no good really, and he definitely had other plans for that afternoon. Whoever understood, understood, and he left there leaving the scum of society simply with an envy that didn't fit inside them. And he asked Yuan Yuan to check out the Fenglen Culture Company, and she said that she had already checked, and that same day a person called Kao Jingyu had contacted her, and she asked Yuan Yuan if she was interested in investments, and she replied positively. Then, the young Lin told the beautiful lady to make an appointment with this person tomorrow, and he would meet her too, anyway. All she had to do was set the location itself for the Peninsula Hotel, which even belongs to him in case no one remembers. The Divine Lady, on the other hand, mentioned that she had thought they had a fun project and asked why they were talking about business. In other words, she was already putting the protagonist against the wall according to what he had recently said. Let's just say that the young Yuan Yuan ended up misunderstanding the situation and the divine lady was only referring to whether or not to swim and was even going to call her to go, saying that the pool in Kyushu was extremely comfortable. However, too many people in one's place and in a swimming pool on top of that was beyond this young woman's means as she appeared to be quite shy. Again, she ran out of there, completely misunderstanding the situation. But anyway, speaking of the pool, we saw the divine lady taking a nice dip while the protagonist was apparently resting in the sunbathing chair. I don't even know if that's the name, but you get my drift. The sculpture carved by the gods came out elegantly, 
stealing the heart, I mean, everyone's attention, including mine, and apparently the protagonist too, but he doesn't know how to disguise it, and ended up making the divine lady a little embarrassed, then asking her if she had soiled the pool for him to be looking at her like that, which, of course, she hadn't. Pulling his girl close to him, he said that she would be his CEO, which in case you don't know what that is yet, means executive director, or something like that. He added that at the end of the year, he had the idea of consolidating existing resources, and he would be very comfortable if she went with him too. Apparently she ended up refusing, since the group she was probably part of hadn't met her expectations, in this case, the group she owned. She added that she had suddenly joined the Ling Yun group, and without any achievements to prove it, it would simply be difficult to convince the public herself. She was also scared, or afraid, that she wouldn't have enough energy to handle it all. But the heartthrob's response here was that if she's too tired, then he could help her with ideas behind the curtains, so she could do whatever she wanted. This caused her to remain silent for a while, since she hadn't expected this response from the protagonist, and since he had put it this way, she would think about it. Finally, we were in a totally different place this time, and young Lin was saying goodbye to his divine lady, and Miss Ying suddenly appeared, and he asked her where she was going dressed like that. In response, she asked him if he remembered the Qin Feng Project Group, and the company had earned more than 100 million in total, and also said that the old hag ended up making things difficult for them at the time. As a result, she still hadn't managed to recover the account. Now don't ask me which account, because I have no idea either. I'm just reading the book and I don't even remember what she's talking about anymore. No chance. It's been so long and you still haven't gotten your money back, said the protagonist. In that case, he offered to go with her then, since if she went alone, she would probably be devoured, in the sense that she wouldn't achieve anything and people would feel superior to her. And that kind of comforted her, and now she felt more confident with him by her side. He made a call, asking the person on the other end of the line to prepare some people, who in this case would be henchmen, and let them wait in front of the Kinfan group waiting for him. That's because he was just going to collect a bill. Half an hour later, we spotted the place where they were going to collect the bills, and the protagonist henchman asked what they could do to help him. Well, go in and ask about the money they owe. You can wait here first. Just follow my orders. And so they did. At the reception, the young woman asked what they wanted to do there and Miss Ying introduced herself, saying she was the manager of the Chaoyang group, and that was Lin Yi. She also said that four months ago they had earned around $112 million for the project, and she would like to speak to their president about it. The young woman was just following orders, and then said that the president of the group was simply with some visitors at the moment, so she didn't have time to talk to them but they could go back and wait for more news. But it was the protagonist who got tired soon afterwards, since he was soon to be the master of the world, thanks to this blessed system that I wanted to appear for me too. He went on to tell them to go and talk to him directly, and the girl said she would call the security guards if he insisted on doing that. But it was no use. In the president's office itself, we saw him talking to Miss Cow, and I don't remember her either just for the record saying that this was the final payment of 600 million and she could take it. This young woman even said that she hoped that in the future he would also take the initiative just like that day. And this was Miss Cao Jingyu, the owner of the Fenglan culture that the young Lin mentioned earlier with the Yuan Yuan, I think. She also commented that she had saved herself a trip thanks to this as the day was too hot to travel. The latter, by the way, was president of the Qin Feng group and was a supreme cattle when it came to women, apparently. And he was excited about their partnership in the future. It was the young Lin who suddenly entered without warning, saying that he hadn't seen Mr. Li in a while, which in this case is the cattle guy who just showed up. It was time for him to pay back the 112 million he had won from their project, and the rat from before said he would pay him everything later, as he was now relatively busy, so it was time for Lin to go. However, he did the complete opposite, and said that he would only give the lab rat project 10 minutes to raise the money itself, otherwise his company would simply be deleted completely. The lady whose name I can no longer remember added that they weren't being unreasonable and the public relations and other departments of the Chaoyang group weren't stupid either. So it wouldn't have a positive impact on his reputation if it went on for longer. But he said that with Miss Cao from Fenglan culture, even if they threatened him, it wouldn't affect his reputation. The moment Young Lin heard her name, he commented to himself that the world was too small and wondered if they hadn't met before making an appointment. Soon after, the protruding tooth ordered the secretary to call the security guards immediately. And even if he disappeared with the protagonist's legs, it would never impact on the Kinfeng project itself. If the two of them were intelligent, then they should get out of there so as not to delay his business. Which, to the chagrin of the guy who wanted his teeth to come out of his mouth because of all the nonsense he spouted, ended up taking the worst of it. That's because the security guards he had sent for were kicked into his office 
and these were young Lin's henchmen, which left the traveling bunny with his tail between his legs now. He then ducked his head when he saw who he was talking to, in this case the boss of the henchmen, and the boss said that he had provoked young Lin, which apparently meant that he was prepared to lose his office completely. Without reaction, the guy simply turned pale when he learned that he was Mr. Lin, and the protagonist simply said that he wasn't very interested in what the scum wanted that day. He only wanted 15 million as interest, and he was supposed to make a check immediately, and the insect said that it was too much interest to pay in such a short time. But he only had two options. Either he gave the 15 million in interest along with the rest he owed, or he could give one of his legs as compensation. And the compensation itself is only for the interest. The scum then prepared the check itself, and finally the young Lin had gotten what he wanted, leaving there happy with his money back and a little extra fat. He referred to Miss Cao, saying that he hoped she would put public pressure on the Chao Yang group, and he wanted them to know what would happen if they offended him. Li Qingfeng. She then said that she didn't care, and as long as the money was in place, she would do any kind of business, and she had investors to meet that afternoon, so she couldn't stay there much longer. Speaking of meetings, we have a cut to a different place, and if I'm not mistaken, this was the protagonist Peninsula Hotel, and the person who was there was, precisely, Miss Cao. She immediately referred to Young Lin, but let's just say she ended up being surprised, and only now has this lady apparently really realized the importance of the protagonist. He, on the other hand, was polite and pulled out a chair so that she could sit down, and she commented that she was a little surprised and then started talking about business. She mentioned the fact that their financing plan was around 140 million, and she had no idea if he had actually read their plan but he immediately replied saying that he didn't need to look. He was going to put 200 million into it, and because he had put 60 million in for no reason, she asked if he was doing it because he wanted to take her as a gift as well. But she completely misunderstood the situation, since he was only talking about business, and he wanted 36% of the shares. But she commented that according to the equity ratio, 200 million could earn him a maximum of 32% of the shares. And after explaining a little what he thought, in the end, she accepted the 30 36% he had asked for before, for the 200 million. He still ended up being very generous, she said, and she added that she would do him a favor too, saying that Li Chenfeng was looking for someone to deal with the protagonist, and he was more than prepared in case that walking rat showed up. The beautiful Miss Cao suddenly received a phone call, and she even got into a fight with the person on the other end of the line, as she asked him or her not to disturb her any further, but apparently there was nothing to do, and she commented that there were some tasks that her father couldn't handle, and asked her to help him, so apparently, she was fighting with her father. As she needed to go and help him, she politely excused herself from young Lin and finally left the place. After that, the protagonist received a call from someone called Wang Ran, and he asked if there were any new developments from the Kao Xiangyu group. That's because the day before he heard someone say that Cisco seemed to have an idea to increase funding, but he didn't know exactly when it would be implemented. For some reason that I still don't understand, he quickly stood up asking the person on the other end of the line to wait for him at the factory and was to contact two diggers and guide them into the factory itself, and quickly. At the factory itself, this lady, who I remember a little, said that the diggers he had asked for on the phone were there, and he asked her to order them to demolish some warehouses inside. Demolish the warehouses? The young lady asked. Just do as I ask, and when we do, someone will come and try to stop us, said the protagonist. As soon as he said this, the young woman went to follow her boss's orders and then instructed the diggers to do as the protagonist had asked, and they really thought it was a shame to have to demolish such a good warehouse. The owner of the factory spoke out afterwards, saying that if they were quick, he would pay them another 500 a day as a bonus. And when you talk about money, people are quick to act. The protagonist, on the other hand, was simply waiting for the person who was going to stop them to show up. And the young woman said that Miss Kao Xiangyu was calling. However, the girl was supposed to calm down because when it came to the other party, whether it was her or him, that person knew exactly what was going on, so she was supposed to keep her eyes in the right place. It didn't take long, and before the bulldozers actually destroyed the warehouse, someone quickly appeared asking young Lin not to move. It seems that this was the head of the cow group, and he immediately asked the young Lin why he had taken two diggers to that place. I don't know what he was holding, but with an evil smile, he said he was simply trying to demolish the warehouse, create a huge pond, and use it to raise some carp. That's because the money he had given Lin was spent in less than two days, and he now owed 
around 200 million. Since Lin had put it that way, he would give him another 200 million and the protagonist would then give him control of the warehouse. That was a lot, since if he gave total control of the warehouse to him, he would end up becoming the factory manager. And for some reason, the guy from before looked at who seemed to be his secretary with a look like he had something on his mind. The guy then said that the protagonist was only going to rent the warehouse to him. After all, it contained various Cisco products, and in the event of an accident, it would be impossible to explain to Lin's team as well. So he was doing it for the sake of the prota as well. The young Lin ended up playing the fool here, and they from the science and technology team would not be responsible if anything happened. And even on the business side, that side, and any problem would be Cisco's obligation to solve, since it would have nothing to do with them. The guy thought he was going to make a profit, since four warehouses for 200 million was simply too cheap. And then the secretary showed up with the contract. He then asked the young Lin to sign, but in order for him to sign, he would first have to pay what he had promised, which upset the guy. But in any case, the 200 million was successfully transferred and eventually, the protagonist gave his signature too. After the negotiation was successful, the young Lin quickly thanked him for the opportunity and wished him and his group all the best. But he wasn't to forget about him when they got too rich. The other was kind too and just said that he had other business to do now so he would leave for the time being. The lady from before then asked why they had to give control of the warehouse to them since it belonged to them alone and he only replied that it was because of the 200 million. The best part is yet to come. I can assure you of that. Returning to his establishment, the young man was all happy thinking he had excellent news, and he soon realized that the owner of the cow group was there. He then asked why she hadn't told them before, as then they would have come back together. But she commented that he was always very busy, so she wouldn't want to get in his way. The boy's father, on the other hand, gave him the idea of a glass of tea first, and as he had said, he had good news to announce, he asked him to tell him what it was all about. Now the entire production line of the science technology group is under my control, said the young man. That really was great news. And not only the production line, but also their warehouses were now his too. Everyone would be controlled by them. And that was the contract. And his father even complimented him on what an excellent deal he had made, again congratulating him on a job well done. At the end of it all, the boy seemed to be very happy with his recent achievements. And, well, he just said that he would even exceed the requirements and would never fail to meet his father's expectations. According to his father, it had been a difficult time for the boy. But as soon as the project was really finished, he could return to his position in the company. I don't quite understand here, but it seems that these two are brothers or something so the real owner of the company is probably their father and not them themselves. But, consequently, they will also be owners in the future. Anyway, she then asked who was currently in charge of the science technology group and how he could have done such a stupid thing, saying that he had been tricked. The guy ended up saying the wrong thing here, and the father said she was worrying too much about it, and the contract was actually signed. Picking up her things, the young lady simply told them to pretend that she had never mentioned anything like that before. After all, she wasn't in the same group as them and they could throw him around. Now what she meant, I think it was in relation to their company. Anyway, the young Lin was very clever and ended up using money from the cow group itself, it seemed, so that he could pay Miss Cow. In the car itself, she wondered how she could have such a silly family. But in any case, she needed to check on the situation of the science technology group. Back at the Kyushu Pavilion, we saw the protagonist going to talk to someone on the phone while the divine lady had her divine beauty sleep at her disposal. On the phone, it seems that they talked about business in the place where the person on the other end of the line was. And according to him, he would soon be returning to his country of origin. At the right time, he would talk to the team about what had happened at the place he was staying, and he said he would be arriving in Zhonghai around 1 p.m. So the protagonist said he would see him the next day and asked how many of them would be with the guy on the other end of the line. And it was around 22 people. That's because they dragged their families with them too. So there were so many people. Put it this way, Lin just said she would meet him at the airport the next day then. And finally, we get a glimpse of a different scenario again. In his thoughts, he said that Shen Tianzhuo would be arriving that evening, so he had to hurry and prepare the whole place where they were going to spend the days. Soon he arrived at the place to do this, and this lady asked him if he was looking for a room. After that, she started showing him some of the rooms they had and so on, all the usual salesman talk and stuff and apparently he wanted to rent out the whole villa. So apparently, he was in the wrong place. The cockroaches there judged ahead of time and thought that after hearing the price he'd gone to the wrong place. But the young lady said he didn't need to pay attention to those disposable items, even if there wasn't a house 
He liked there. It was okay to just have a look and still not buy. This saleswoman has my full respect. Finally, a person who is not toxic in this work. He quickly said that he didn't mind the high price of the houses they had, and he remembered that they used to have villas there, but now looking at them, they seem to really be large apartments. For some reason, it seems that these guys were either mocking the protagonist, or they were truly recognizing his value, but it doesn't matter. The beautiful lady said that they even had villas, but they were concentrated on the second floor for sale, and she could take him there immediately. But to find out what happens from now on, we'll have to wait for the next chapter. So if you liked it and want to follow the continuation of this work, don't forget to leave your like so you can support my work. It's always an honor and a privilege for me to have you here with me. I wish you and your family all the best, and I'll see you next time.